G'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips. Three rounds of the home and away season left. We're up to round 22. Only three weeks left for many of our football clubs. There will be 10 of us that uh, unfortunately will bow out come the end of the season, but I'm gonna try and enjoy it while it's here. Round 21 was crazy. You know, not even just about getting tips right or wrong. It was just the games that took place, you know, Port beating City by 112. I cover all of that in the football come down this week, uh, but it was wild and I got five out of nine. And I think considering a little bit of unpredictability with this round, I'm not too disappointed with that. Let's go through exactly what I got wrong. So, Bulldogs over Melbourne was simple enough. I didn't tip the West Coast Eagles. That was definitely a bit of an upset. North over Richmond. Geelong over Adelaide was closer than I expected. Changed my tip at the last minute to Collingwood. Uh, just purely on gut feel. And thankfully, my gut this time got it right. I don't know why I tipped Sydney. <laughs> I don't know why. I just thought they would snap back out of their form eventually. I didn't really realize they were... You know, they'd lost seven in a row against Port. That is now eight. And my God, I don't know when the last time I got a tip so badly wrong was. I think I might have actually tipped West Coast to beat Sydney at Jim HBA in 2021 when we lost by 91 points. That might be the other worst tip wrong I've ever got. But that that could that's right up there. Hawthorne fell just short against the Giants. Giants came back late to ruin my tip. Same thing with Essendon to beat Fremantle. Not too upset about that one. And then the Brisbane Lions wallop St. Kilda, which I didn't see coming. So overall, five out of nine. Not great, but not the absolute worst. So without further ado, let's get into how everyone else went in our various competitions. So we had the members tipping competition. The winner this week was Chief Water with eight correct tips. Not bad, much better than my five. The general tipping winner was Noam. Noam Flagdons, forgive me if I'm not saying that right, but perfect nine and correctly backed in his own boys uh, with nine correct tips and a margin of 28. The members tipping leader is still real swift for an enormous streak now, 123. And the general tipping leader for the second week in a row is Ammo712 with 121. Outstanding going, you guys. And of course, in the fantasy league leader, once again, Tully Griffiths with an increasing average every week of 2140. Well done to all our weekly winners. I am about 228th in the fantasy comp, uh, which I think is about halfway up, maybe. And I am the top third of the general tipping competition. So not great, but um, you know, you guys are much better than th at this than I am. So with that all being said, let's talk about round 22. And God, there's some tricky ones coming up. Um, and the first one is also very tricky. Now, oh, a couple of weeks ago, I would have thought Collingwood were out and probably not a good chance of winning this, but things have changed. Not only did Collingwood win uh, with a you know, pretty impressive win over Carlton. Carlton obviously looking a bit shaky, but classic game. Collingwood lift the occasion as they so often do. Um, you know, given that they've just beaten Carlton, Sydney at the SCG now, given they've lost five of the last six and lost most recently by 112 points, I have no faith in Sydney at the moment. And I could be wrong for that. I could I could see them snapping back into form and beating Collingwood who, you know, on current form and, and fitness, you know, Dugowie's just done an injury as well, hamstring. This, this is gettable. Now, could this be the weak Sydney make a response like things have gotten so bad that this will invoke a response in the same way that Essendon had a really good response against Fremantle. Is this the week that happens? It could be, but I just don't think I'm going to tip Sydney this week. They look absolutely listless and I do think I might get this wrong, but I'm going to tip the Pies to win a thriller by four points, even without to goey. That's to the extent to which I've lost faith in Sydney and I know I'm probably going to get this wrong because they will, I reckon, correct their form to some extent. This week makes sense, but I'm going to say Collingwood by four points. Sorry, City fans. Brisbane Lions versus the Giants at the Gabba. This is a, a ripper, actually. Brisbane a second and GWS a fourth. Brisbane flexing muscle in emphatic fashion to wallop St. Kilda at Marvel Stadium. I didn't expect that to be so one-sided when you consider St. Kilda's form of late, but uh, the Lions haven't really put a foot wrong for a long time now. Form side of the competition who only seem to be strengthening. Now, you can make an argument this is a bad time to get stronger because it could imply that a form slump's coming, but you know, I don't know if I'll subscribe to that. Look at the way Carlton finished last year, GWS, even with a pre-finals buy, that form slump never really came for them. And the Lions, you know, they'll have a fire in their belly after last year. So I am not thinking that the Lions will waver anytime soon. The Giants look pretty good. You know, it's a pretty good run of form now. Look at three quarter time against Hawthorne. They didn't look very convincing. They were 28 points down. They made a couple of positional changes. Brent Daniels goes, spends more time at stoppages. Jesse Hogan went large with five and Hawthorne are a very good team at the moment. So the Giants were able to play a little bit more daring in the second half and inflict some damage in particular in that last quarter. So look, I don't think this is the best Giants side I've ever seen. But they're starting to find their groove and they're winning games and they're right in the mix. Now, 
is it going to be enough to really challenge the Lions at the Gabba? I don't think so, to be honest. Now, the GWS can probably win anywhere at any time like they did last year. That's not the aspect of this that's making me unconvinced. I just don't think Brisbane will let up. I just really don't think so. So I'm going to say that the Brisbane Lions win this by 24 points because they are the best team in the league. Oh, North Melbourne versus West Coast. This has been Spoon Bowl for the last couple of years. And thankfully, it looks like neither side will win the wooden spoon. What a win for us West Coast and North Melbourne fans. Although, you know, it, it could still happen. Anyway, North Melbourne versus West Coast. Now, these two sides met earlier this year. And the, the Roos got their first win over West Coast, who were playing horrifically at the time. I saw that coming. I tipped North Melbourne. And, I, you know, since then, West Coast went on a really bad stretch of form that ultimately lost their coach. And North Melbourne have looked pretty encouraging, albeit only winning two games since then. They've gotten close and they've competed really well against good teams. And their form has been relatively consistent other than one big loss to Sydney. And this is the most compelling run of form I've seen North Melbourne produce in a while. Now against Richmond, they probably weren't at their absolute best and they won by a couple of goals. I think Richmond have this ability to compete well, you know, at least in contrast to West Coast over the last couple of years, Richmond have won two games, but I don't hold it against North Melbourne too heavily that they didn't necessarily put them away. West Coast last month has been okay if you take out one horrific loss against the Saints. You know, the last three home games, it was a win over the Gold Coast Suns, ripping game, a good fight in the Derby, a good fight against the Brisbane Lions. Uh, nonetheless, all their best performances have been at home this year, and Hobart here just throws out a different variable. And I think North Melbourne could actually win this quite easily. I think Wardlaw and Logue are in doubt. I don't think they'll play this week. Um, West Coast may or may not get Tom Barris back. Even still, I just don't think I have faith in West Coast playing well and backing it up next week. And if they do, if they do at least get close and play well, let's just say play well, it'll bode really well for Jared Schofield's chances. I'm going to say North Melbourne, and I'm not just saying this to pander to North Melbourne fans or lower expectations. I don't think West Coast are going to win this game. I think North Melbourne have been cons considerably better, and I don't trust West Coast in Hobart and North Melbourne always beat us. So let's say six goals. Fremantle versus Geelong. This is a big game. Fremantle obviously, you know, fumbled a bit of an opportunity with five goals up against Essendon last week and Essendon stormed home to win. Um, outstanding for the narrative of this season. Bad for Fremantle's top four hopes. Now, they have been pretty rock solid and, and you know, didn't play poorly. They kicked quite accurately, which helped them to some extent. But over the stretch, you know, I'm not too concerned about their form. I am a little bit concerned, I suppose, about their ability to make the four. This is a very important game. Geelong, challenged by Adelaide. Adelaide can be unpredictable this year. I don't know what to make of that. Geelong have just been good enough to win games. They've got match winners. Jeremy Cameron was one of them kicking six in this game. It was probably the difference between the two sides. I am very confident Fremantle's going to win this, to be honest. Um, perhaps I'm not paying enough respect to Geelong at the moment, but Fremantle's midfield contested game, the ruck dominance that they're going to have in this game as well, just leads me to think in front of a home crowd, Fremantle not letting it slip. I'll be very surprised, and I'll say comfortably a 27-point Fremantle win. Essendon versus the Gold Coast Suns. Now, I thought this might be a chance for Gold Coast to nab their first away win, given that Essendon had appeared to plummet. However, recent events have caused me to shift that opinion Essendon were very good against Fremantle really good to see a response from them in a week where they were dragged through the mud not just because of the way they played this season I think it's against the backdrop of a few seasons of finishing poorly towards the back end we know what happened at the end of 2023 so to buck that trend prove a few people wrong must be really pleasing for Essendon fans and this is a big opportunity for them the Suns have not won a game away from home this year, and it's it's curious to me as well that they're actually playing in Melbourne after playing in Perth the week before. That's a weird fixture quirk, so does that work against them? Potentially. If they're already bad on the road, this uh, this little extra variable doesn't help them. They have the tools to beat Essendon. Essendon also have the tools to beat Gold Coast. It's actually fairly evenly rated, I think, on quality. It's just the fact that this is away from home, and Essendon have got some belief back and are still well and truly in the touch for the top eight now because they won a game that people didn't expect them to. And I think they should beat Gold Coast. It'll be a shock if they don't, and the, the pitchforks will come out again. If Gold Coast, if this is their first away win, the criticism will come for Essendon, but I'm going to back him in. I, I think they should win this game, and let's call it 20 points. I hope they do. Melbourne v Port Adelaide at the MCG. Now, this might have looked like a, a ripping game, I don't know, a month into the season. You'd be like, ooh, round 22, this, these two sides, this would be a great fixture. I, I no longer feel that way. 
Uh, with all due respect to Melbourne, the wheels have come off this year in a big way um, and were well beaten by the Bulldogs on the weekend or Friday night. And, you know, I think given there's some injuries, Gorn's playing other than Petrarca out. I keep mentioning that, but that's, you know, their best two players and two of the best players in the competition. Injuries in general and overall just an inconsistency and at times fatigue and malaise, I suppose, is the word for Melbourne. I just don't think I see them getting up in this game. By contrast, Port Adelaide, they have put together, in the, in in particular the last fortnight. Now, over the stretch, they, they've been winning games. They, they beat the Bulldogs, which now retrospectively looks even more impressive. But then they've beaten Carlton at Marvel in a big game, finals-like game. Then to do what they did against Sydney. Again, where does Sydney's drop-off and Port Adelaide's uplift where, where does one start and the other end? I'm not really too sure. So I'm not going to buy into the whole 112 aspect of it, other than to give Port Adelaide credit for really throwing themselves back in the mix for top four and potentially a grand final. So given that these two sides are intersecting at this current point in time, regardless of the MCG factor, I think Port have won at least one game at the G this year over Richmond. Um, I don't think they'll have too many concerns about this. I think they'll win by five goals on current form. Carlton versus Hawthorne, what a game this could be. I'm, I'm, I'm keen for it. I'm keen for it because there's so many narratives. I reckon uh, it's amazing how things have changed in the last week, but surely only one of these teams makes finals. You'd think so. You'd think so. So this becomes a genuine mini elimination final given Carlton have dropped two winnable games in a row. And I don't think they're playing horribly, but they definitely let it slip against Collingwood and were outplayed for a large portion of that game. Again, what was the margin? Five goals or something like that uh, early in the fourth, I want to say. They left their run late, almost charged home. A straight kick from McGovern would mean that there is still a chance for top four, I'd imagine, but that is not the way it panned out. And so this, se- this game, this season is on the line. And Hawthorne, equally, have been fantastic and just can't quite break into that top eight. And this, losing this... Given they lost to GWS, a game I thought they'd win, if they lose this, they're probably out of finals. I would have thought. I would have thought. Surely. That being said, I don't know who to sit. I think Hawthorne's form has been more compelling. I think Carlton probably have the stronger team on paper. But I think I'm going to go with Hawthorne. Even though Hawthorne didn't close out the game well last week, they could get a version of Carlton that is playing for the season and comes out. This is why it's a 50-50 for me. But I think on the current form, Hawthorne deserve my tip and I'll say Hawthorne win this by nine points to break Carlton's heart and ruin their season. Richmond St Kilda. Uh, Richmond lost by a couple of goals to North Melbourne. Again, probably just waiting this season out at this current point in time. They've just about locked up the spoon. I don't think they have anything to be ashamed of. I don't think the, the criticism of this year has been super fair. I think they have been well, their list has probably been overexposed, and I still think they're battling out games well. And by extension, could still jag an upset in the last couple of weeks. And St Kilda could or could not be ripe for the picking because St Kilda, after a really good run of form, were poleaxed by the Brisbane Lions, particularly in contested ball. They had a real dirty day. Is it just a one and done? I'm not sure. Is that the start of their resistance and their enthusiasm being broken? I, I really don't know. Uh, but over the stretch, St Kilda's second half of the season has been good up until the horrific Brisbane game. So are they gettable? I'd say they're gettable, but partially out of respect for Richmond. I don't think Richmond is a good team, but I think they fight hard. And therefore, if St Kilda's not on here, Richmond could get them. But I'm going to respect St Kilda to have a little bit of a response. I don't think they'll lose this game. It's possible, but their best 22 on paper is far too strong. So I'll say the Saints by 25. And finally, we've got a game between the Crows and the Bulldogs, which could be good um, because Adelaide are unpredictable and we're very good against the Cats at GMHBA. You know, a late Rochelle goal drags it back to five points, nearly pulled off a big upset in the context of this season. And that's kind of just been the way of Adelaide's season. Play well when you don't expect it against good opposition and then, you know, sometimes fall to bits against teams you'd think they should beat. Now, the Bulldogs are one of the best teams in the competition and I think can win the flag. That probably, I know this might seem illogical, but you'd you'd imagine they probably need to make the four to play in a grand final this year. Ironically, they are one of only, I reckon, two teams who have made a grand final from outside the four in the last 27 years. I'm going off the hip here. The Bulldogs in 16 and 21 both made the grand final outside the four. And I reckon GWS did it in 2019 from sixth. Has another team since like Adelaide in 98 made the grand final from outside the four? It's possible, but I don't think I don't think so. Let me know in the comments. You guys are great for correcting me. My point there really was that every game is a must win at the moment for the Bulldogs and they are so red hot right now. Adelaide Oval, 
Well, Adelaide's last home game didn't go so well, but they can turn it up there. They were great there, particularly last year. So I'm expecting this game could throw up a bit of a surprise, but with the Bulldogs' season more or less on the line, well, that doesn't mean they're going to win. But look, let's just go on the form, and I think the Bulldogs are equipped to win this game by 40 points, to be honest. No disrespect to Adelaide, but I think the Bulldogs are dangerous at the moment and genuinely a serious premiership threat. And if they are serious about that, they should win this game comfortably, in my opinion. Could see an upset, but let's go the doggies by 40. All right, that wraps up the round. So we have a new potential minor premier. Were the Lions 0-5? Or they were 0-4 or something like that? They started the year... I don't know if that's ever happened before. To, to potentially claim top spot. Now, that's, that's reliance on me getting the Sydney tip correct. Like, if they lose to Collingwood, they'll drop out of the top spot. But... Then we got Port Adelaide in third, Fremantle back and forth, and I think Fremantle then played GWS in a huge game, almost like a mini final as well, playing for a top four spot. Bulldogs up in fifth again. I think they should make the top four from here. The Cats in seventh and Essendon back into the eighth. So Carlton and Hawthorne still, despite me saying one of those teams make the finals, they still sit outside the eight by the end of this round. Collingwood, even with a win in 11th, it'd be tough to make the finals from there. Everyone below Collingwood, is just about done for the year. Melbourne, Gold Coast, St Kilda, Adelaide, West Coast, North Melbourne. So interestingly, the battle between 16th and 17th there hots up again between these two sides. What a rivalry, 0.1%. And if I'm right in thinking North Melbourne do beat West Coast, then I think we're headed for a reality where that flips and North Melbourne finish higher than West Coast at the end of this season. So it's the battle for pick two, baby, bring it on. But thank you for joining me for Just the Tips for round 22. So let me know in the comments, um, you know, your tips for this round and I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.